Okay, so I've been learning about these Frechet spaces for a few days now. I mean, I'm still very much a novice about it, but I've been thinking about the foundations of the subject. And um, in particular, in my last video, I described how I thought that these Frechet spaces in general can be associated with particular mappings. And I now thought it's a good idea to give these mappings a name. I shall call them fresh air mappings. And the reason I think it's a good idea to go to this sort of, well one reason I think it's a good idea to go to this sort of mapping centric viewpoints of thinking about these topological spaces is that when you have spaces of mappings, it's very natural to think about metrics that you can set up on spaces of mappings. So if you think about it, if each of these Frechet sets, which is basically a very sort of general type of topological space, if each of them is associated with a mapping which closely um, sort of um, contains a lot of the information about the way that the space is, and one has a metric space on the mappings which is such that if two mappings are close to each other in the metric space then they're similar then essentially it's a route towards deriving a sort of metric space um, where the elements in a metric space are Frechet spaces and we're literally measuring how much disparity there is between two different topological spaces and there's obviously going to be several ways to do this but I thought I'd just go over the general idea. I, I mean, this is a general sort of direction of research that it might be interesting to take. It's not something I've developed much on because I say, as I say, I've only learnt about these concepts for a few days. But I think the sort of, um, you know, the, the sort of pop science line of this kind of project would be topological multiverses because we're essentially thinking about making sort of metric spaces, which are kinds of topological spaces, which um, have elements which themselves are very general topological spaces and potentially the other metric spaces. So you can have all sorts of spaces with points inside them, which can be other spaces and so on. Anyway, that's the sort of um, the, the far end of it. Let's get into it from the beginning. So suppose we have a set K, let's let PK denote the power set of K. That means that PK is the collection of all subsets of K. Now a Frechlet V space, I shall sometimes call it a Frechlet space, um, we can write that, well, we'll give it a name, we'll call it S, and we'll write this Frechlet space as a pair. K, which is just a set, and a collection of elements called zeta x, which are subsets of a power set of k. Zeta x, so x is a member of, the, sorry, I, 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 there's a bit of a typo here. At the end of this curly bracket here, I should have said such that x is a member of k. What I'm actually trying to say here is that a French space s has two parts to it, it has a set k, and for each member x of the set k, there is one of these zeta or x objects, which, as I say, is a subset of a power set of k. To put it much more simply, for every element x of k, there is an object. This object is called zeta x, and zeta x is a collection of neighborhoods of x. And what is a neighborhood of X? It's just a subset of K. So in other words, a Frechlet space is simply a set, and for each set, there's a collection of neighborhoods. Sorry, a Frechlet space is a set, and for each member X of the set, there is a collection of neighborhoods, C to X, and that's just a collection of subsets of K. That's all there is to it. Um, now, what I would like to do is to define, as I said before, a Frechet mapping. 
and this is basically a weight to sort of represent Frechette spaces. Uh, in fact, I think the Frechette mappings that are defined and Frechette spaces are in one-to-one -one correspondence. A Frechette mapping is a mapping from the set K. <clears throat> I mean, K here is really a sort of ambient space. It's for space of all elements, and we're interested in what the element, what the neighbourhoods of these elements are. Anyway, so a Frechette mapping is basically just a mapping F from K to the power set of the power set of K. And I put it to you that um, the Frechet mappings are in one the Frechet mappings with respect to an ambient with respect to a set K are in one to one correspondence with Frechet spaces um, using that set K. Um, now the reason you can see this is think about an element x belonging to k now that element x um, if we think about things from the context of our frechette mapping well f is a mapping of k to this other thing power set of power set of k and so x is in k so f of x is going to be a member of the power set of a power set of k. Now what is the power set of a power set of k? What does it mean for f of x to be a member of the power set of a power set of k? What it means is it means that f of x is going to be a subset of the power set of k. What is a subset of a power set of k? Well, zeta x is a subset of a power set of k. Zeta x is the collection of neighbourhoods, the collection of subsets of k, which in the Frechet space setup correspond to the, well, yeah, the collections of neighbourhoods of x. But it's also, in a way, a bit le a bit less heavy on notation just to think should think of a Frechet mapping just as a mapping from k to a set of power sets of power sets of k but there's more to it than that because when we have mappings from a set it could be you know a finite set or whatever um, we have mappings from some set to the power set of a power set of that set well basically what we're saying is that we have a, the space of all such mappings we'll call that space mk so mk is essentially the set of frechette mappings that use this set of k elements so this is a set of mappings and so there should be lots of ways to formulate metrics upon this space of mappings. So in some sense, we can introduce a sort of distance measure, which measures the distance between two of these different sorts of mappings, these Frechet mappings. So perhaps the distance DFG between a pair of mappings in this space MK could be some kind of measure of the disparity between the types of collections of neighbourhoods allocated to the different points of K by these two Frechet mappings F and G. And presumably, if the distance between the map Frechet mappings F and G is, let's say, small, meaning that F and G are sort of similar, then um, the That should mean that F and G are pretty similar. It should also mean that the corresponding Frechet spaces, um, this, the Frechet spaces that correspond to F and G should be pretty similar. But I would go further and conjecture that in general, once we've got one of these metrics D uh, on this space MK of Frechet mappings using the set K, then there should be a corresponding metric D dash on the set of Frechet spaces using K um, using the set K because you know the, 
those mappings are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the spaces when the mappings are similar the spaces should be similar and so then basically what one's able to do hopefully is to construct a sort of metric space the elements of which are Frecce spaces which are already pretty general objects and um, one can essentially consider which Frecce spaces are similar to which other ones depending on what kind of metrics one's pick, one picks and I think a good arena to pick metrics in is in the consideration of these Frecce mappings